Betsy's not doing real well. She needs some gas. We're going to stop, fuel up. Of course, I'll be the one fueling up. Hopefully, at least Sheldon will get the windows this time. Holy smokes. <laughs> Those two girls at the gas station, I think they liked you. Never met anybody quite like me before. They asked me if my father was single. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I brought a few white hats along with us. Perfect. The classic symbol of Calgary. If a guy plays ball, they get the hat, right? Exactly. Good pick, white hat. That white hat tradition goes back to, what was it, Mayor McKay in the 40s? I actually don't know that. I didn't know that. I know we white hat people when they come to town if they're important. I thought we'd switch it up a little bit and take the white hats with us. So we're going up to Bayfield, right on Lake Huron. We're going to see Bill. Bill's been collecting for 60 years. He's got automobilia, gas pumps, signage. Apparently, Phil has a lot of buildings on his land. Well, hopefully, we're going to Phil's land and not landfill. Oh, there. This must be in here. Here we go. Look at this place. Holy Christ! Yeah. Interesting. This is interesting. He's got his own little village here. Yeah. He's got a pile of stuff. You must be Phil. I am. Phil, Scott Cousins, how are you? How do you do? Hey, Phil, I'm Sheldon. Oh, yeah, it's a little it's windy. windy. Well, we were noticing all the buildings coming in. You got a little bit of inventory here, Phil. Yes? I'm calling it Philville. I've heard that before. Looks like you're an accumulator. Yeah, myself, I have mechanical things, clocks, guns, motors, collectibles, Coca-Cola, beer, garden decorations, <laughs> enamelware, signs, advertising, old tractors, the odd antique stove, railroad memorabilia. We also make maple syrup here. I used to have bees here, but I got sick of getting stung, so we don't sell honey anymore. And a few old boats. <laughs> Are you willing to part with a little bit of it today? Well, a little bit, yeah. This looks like a good place to start. I can see the bottom of a Coke sign there. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. Yeah. It's been uh, beat a little bit. In nice shape, they're like 1,200. Yeah, I think the market's dropped a bit on oh, those. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. In, in really good shape, they're worth about 800 now. Yeah, OK. You've got a Quaker State sign here. What did you need out of the Quaker State? Well, I was looking for six on it, but... It, Whoa, that's a pretty uh, steep price. Well, it's a, it's a nice little sign. It's been shot once there. I have means to shoot it a few more times, if that helped. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's your turn to make me an offer. At 600, I'm afraid to even make an offer. <laughs> oh, no, don't be shy. <laughs> so I try them on. I couldn't even give you 200 for it. He's like, oh, God, I've been shot. Oh, I think yeah. we're, we're too far That's apart. That's what I said. That's yeah. what I said at the first. Say, so, Phil, what would you do on this little anvil? 25. Well, you got 20 on it. You're supposed to go down. <laughs> no, but I... Down for the picker, boys, not up. No, you got to start high with you guys, see? OK, well, I'll say four. <laughs> oh, well. Uh... <laughs> OK, we'll make it short and sweet. 15 bucks. I knocked five bucks off of $20. Done. OK? I'm having some fun. We broke the ice. You've been looking for one of these for <laughs> right across this vast country. It's not exactly the one I'm looking for, but yeah. it is a bear trap, I think. Yeah. yeah. We want to set it, test it? Yeah. You do the jaws, I'll, I'll hold it down. There we go. I think it's rusted out a little bit. It's not as strong as it used to be. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeah. So how much is the trap? 250 He's not easy. <laughs> I, I, I should take my anvil and go. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see the, the kick plate Pepsi? Yeah. That's really been shot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it Someone... looks like it was at Custer's last stand. He did have one sign on the ceiling that didn't look too bad. It was a Toronto Star sign. Is it double-sided or single-sided? Single-sided. Single-sided. Okay. Decent sign. It's one you don't see out west as often as some of the other ones. These were actually on bicycle stands. That sign looks to me like from the 40s or 50s. So that would be like 100? Yep. Well, I'm thinking I can do 100 on that. Okay. Here's a Buckingham. 
Yeah, you know, cigarette stuff's really slowed really down quiet, as eh? of yep. late, eh? Yeah. The stuff that's really popular is the good oil and gas and yep. coffee and tea, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's a scarce gas pump, isn't it? I've never seen the skinny one like that. This gas pump came with this property when I bought the property in 1979. Wow. So you don't have much into it? Not a lot, no. So I got a total of $49 in that pump. So what would you need out of it? I've turned down five grand for the pump and two for the top. He paid 50 bucks for it. He turned down 7,000. So it's not for sale? Not really. It was never leaving that garage, ever. Uh -huh. I see something I'd like to buy off you. Uh-oh. See, this is kind of stuff that I'm not trying to sell like. This is all your favorite stuff in here. Oh, kind of. Like, it's a workshop where no work gets done. What about the Red Indian That's sign? That's what I'm looking at, is the oh, Red Indian sign. It was covering a stovepipe hole. So again, you got nothing into it. Nothing, nothing, into, nothing it. into it, yeah. I'm what do you mean... want out of it? I like it. So come on, hit me with your best shot on the Red Indian sign. You're actually in the inner sanctum here. Where well, that's really? where we want to be. I assume you're telling me by the lack of response that you're not selling me the Red Indian sign. Not everything's for sale. Like, I have some of my own collections that are not for sale. Unfortunately, they kind of zero in on a lot of the things I like to keep. Do you have any more White Rose type stuff or Anarco? They're pretty high priced. You hey. must have bought them 10 years ago. I did. Anarco is a type of oil or gas that was put out by a company, White Rose. It's got the little boy holding the sign on the Anarco, and that's what everybody wants. It's got the figural, it's got the graphics, it's early 1930s usually. So it's the stuff that's second to Red Indian in terms of popularity. Yikes! Yep. You got some serious 10 years ago prices on yep, these. Yeah, that is, yeah. So what did you pay for it? Oh, um, over three. It was a, it is a nice bank, though. Did you yeah. buy that for resale at the time, or did you buy I that? I was actually collecting, uh, okay. you know, Here with the old go. gas pump yeah. and stuff, I was... So uh, you paid a premium yep. to get it for yourself 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah. Right. And yeah, the market peaked 10 years ago. A lot of areas of collecting have softened. Part of that's the economy. Part of that is a lot of these guys that we're collecting are too old, and I'm finding some of them want to sell and not collect anymore. If you were to sell the whole lot of those Anarco tins, what would be your rock bottom, blow it out price? Oh. And forget what you got into them, because that's so irrelevant at this point. 600 bucks. We were probably not going to be happy, but I'd go 400 on them. That's not leaving us a lot of room for profit. I just think we're just a little too far apart. That's OK. I hate to sell for less than I got in stuff. I either have to wait till the market turns around or um, get buried with it. Phil, I'm going to warn you. Scott here, Uh huh. he's a tank driver. I stalled it. Oh, boy, <laughs> yeah. That's a World War II uh, toy to uh, save on metal, eh? <laughs> but there's several more buildings, and I'm thinking, well, maybe there's something in one of these buildings that Phil is not quite as attached to. I know it's one of your favorites because it was tucked away back here. Well, yeah. It's in pretty tough shape here. Oh, yeah. Water. Yeah, well. Hit me with your best shot, Phil. 100 bucks. Oh. Oh, oh, shocking. <laughs> what about this? Well, this is actually a, a box that a roll of linoleum would come from. <laughs> The good news for us, though, is we're shipping. We can yeah. put stuff in it. Exactly. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. What would you want for that? It's got 30 bucks on it. I could knock five off that. All right, 25, done. That's actually the best priced item I've seen so far, Phil. <laughs> I hope they're happy with it. A box is something we can use for packaging at the same time, and the graphics were good on that. They really know their stuff. Bought myself a Hercules made in Canada anvil. They're good guys. Decent sign. It's nice and bright. Somebody will want that sign. 
Well, well you're thanks interested. a lot. You're tough to deal with. I know. But I get practice. You got practice. 60 yeah. years of it, apparently. Over there. Maybe you'll have a little less attachment to those anarcho tins next time I'm through. I have a feeling they might still be here. <laughs> could be. Could be. Oh, I forgot to ask him about maple syrup. What about maple syrup? I was going to buy some maple syrup. Does he sell maple syrup? He sells maple syrup. We're in a beautiful part of southern Ontario. It's Oxford County. It's rich with antiques. Uh, we're going to see a guy called Marty. He's got a shop. He's a picker. He sells to other dealers like us. That's interesting. It's yeah. really a storage facility, right? Yeah. We're in Ingersoll, Ontario. This morning, we're hoping to get into Marty's place and pick some good things. There we are. Hey, I'm Sheldon. Sheldon. You must be Marty. Scott. Nice to meet you, Scott. Nice to meet you, Marty. So what's the story? This is where I drop everything. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a bit haphazard in here, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I go out and hunt the stuff down myself because the drill is in the hunt. So I'll dig through barns and basements and attics and junk stores. It doesn't matter how old it is. If it looks attractive to me and I think someone else will enjoy it, I'll pick it up. Boy, Marty, you got the eclectic collection here. So nothing's priced, so what do we do? Do we just look around and then ask you? Yeah, uh, just snoop around and see something you like, pull it out, and uh, I'm sure we can work out a deal. I can see that this is a guy that's like a flea market picker, but the good news for us is this is not a place where the public gets. This is a place where Marty takes his stuff, sorts it, prices it, and decides what he's going to do with it. Oh, this is cool. I'm going to try that on. <laughs> I love old serviceman jackets, whether it's for Maytag repairmen, Esso. This was the Silverwood Dairies one. And they are hot amongst young kids today. How much is Bruce's jacket? That's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Does it fit me well enough for 20 bucks? I don't know, Bruce. <laughs> Scott looks good in everything. <laughs> I thank you, Sheldon. <laughs> I, I feel good about myself now. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to have to buy it. Good. My mother's been in the business for 30 years, so I've been dragged around to junk shops and flea markets and antique shows my whole life. We need something for the dashboard in the, in the vehicle. Sheldon's got a great <laughs> eye for a naked lady. She'd been uh, huluing a little too much because the, the spring was a little bit loose. I don't want to risk it. I'm I think it's just the string is scratched. There was a time those hula knotters were gold. Oh. I think you're getting attached to her. Well, no, I'm getting attached to whether or not I can flip it to somebody. I don't want the work associated with making that one look good enough to sell it. She's got a fairly short skirt, doesn't she? Yeah. She's <laughs> got skateboards. Oh, cool. Somebody changed the wheels on that one. Yeah. Yeah, they souped that one up. Skateboards are hugely collectible. Nash Manufacturing. Yeah, that's the standard department store, one of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and still today. Not wood, they were fiberglass or plastic. It's got a good image on it. And guys that have skateboard shops, they want to hang them from the ceiling because they got the look. They're all vintage. So how much do you want for these? I'll go 30 bucks on the lot. 30. 25 bucks. All right, done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make some money off those. Here go. Marty, he's an interesting guy. He likes to buy really low and sell slightly higher. So he's a picker. He sells to other dealers like us. Look at the look in Rocket's face. <laughs> Isn't that classic? Sporting memorabilia is very desirable because guys that have bars want it. Hey, there's Jackie Parker. Guys that just collect sporting stuff want it. Great moments in Canadian sport. Oh, Bobby Hull. Bobby is just about to have the big slap shot. And the, the big <laughs> curve. The bug's and the scared. <laughs> That's hilarious. Miss, Bobby, miss. I could see immediately that it was old, and it was just a really cheap 39 cent banner in its day. But you know what? Bobby Hull stuff's not common, and I know people that will pay $20, $25 for that easy. How much do you want for the Bobby? Uh, I was thinking 15 on the banner. I'd pay 10 for it. That's all I'd pay. That's fine. Cut. Cut. Everything's for sale, everything has a price. As long as I make my money and they make their money, I'm happy. 
I saw a Dumbo cookie jar, turnabout cookie jar. You could have Dumbo that way. You could turn his head around that way. Proper Walt Disney one. It was marked on the bottom, so it wasn't a knockoff. At least there's no chips. There's no yeah, scratches. and they often no, get uh... busted right here. Yeah. On the rim when people put them in. Made in the 1940s and the early 50s, right after the movie, Dumbo came out. What would you want for Dumbo? Uh, you can have him for 15. I love Dumbo. Oh, I can do that, yeah. Right. yeah. But I still cry at the sad parts. Lightning Kung Fu. I've never even heard of this movie. Have you, Sheldon? Oh, yeah, that was one of Hung Kam Bo's better movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great sound system you got there. Yeah, it's my baby. It's not the top of the line Bang & Olsen, but even a low-end Bang & Olsen's better than most of the stereo systems out there. Anything the Danes make, quality. Put some jazz on. Knock yourself out. There we are. That thing was made in the early 70s, and it still looks good today. Okay, good. What would you need out of that? My best price is 300 on it. It's tempting. It's got one guy that likes this stuff. Let me think about that for a minute. But I want to mm -hmm. ask you about your fan. That is a cool fan. I think these were really popular in the 50s. Where'd you get it from? One of those parts of Detroit you're not supposed to be in. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing there? Picking. <laughs> it's a dual function, right? You could use it as a stool. Yep. And when the house got really hot, you turned the fan on. Fans in general are easy moves. What kind of price do you want from me for it? I'd let it go for 50 bucks. Oh, I'm having that. Yeah. Deal. Right. Somebody's gonna love that. We're buying a few things. Scott's pulling the trigger here and there. Where did these buttons come out of? A uh, dirty old estate I was digging through last week. They are dirty. Yeah, but there's some pretty cool ones on there, so I just grabbed the whole bunch. Some of them are older, right? Yeah. I found some Led Zeppelin pins. I noticed right in the middle of it was a real good early vintage Beatles pin. So what would you want for the whole rack of these things? You take them all in the stink with you for 10 bucks. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. All right. Yeah, no problem. Look at that. Have you ever seen that before? They're heat lamps. And what would they be for heat? I think they're more for relaxational. They're cool. I mean, they almost look like a black light. Look at these. You can tilt them to swivel around. You guys rotate on a different planet than me. What would you want for them? I'd have to get 60 out of the pair. I've never seen you stew for 60 bucks. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I feel better at 20 a piece, but before I can open my mouth. Thank you, Marty. Um, here, I made All the right. decision for you, partner. I know you want them. I like to keep the process moving along. <laughs> Anything upstairs? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of big pieces up there and uh, some projects I haven't gotten around to yet. Wow, a little bit of everything here. Is this a chair? Yes, it's a rocker. That's funny. Yeah. When I first looked at it, I thought it was just something some hack put together. That's actually really good. Man, it was just beautiful to rock in. Like, is this something one off, or what is it? Well, there was a few hundred produced. So, like, it's a real piece of furniture. It's not just some quirky yeah, guy it, that made it. Well, he's a quirky guy. What's his name? William Lishman. The guy from the movie? The what movie? The movie Fly Away Home. He teaches the geese to fly, right? Yep, to yeah. follow him in his lightweight plane. Yeah. Oh, that guy! Yeah, he's in Ontario, isn't yeah. he? North of Toronto, yeah. Right, right. He made this. Yes. He's a well-known artist and sculptor, and he's won national awards. It is a great piece of Canadian history. It made it to Architectural Digest, and then once sold at auction for $5,000. <laughs> I'm sitting in a $5,000 chair? Again. <laughs> yeah. You should try it. All right, I'm in. Yeah, this is a really cool chair. What do you have to have for it? Thousand bucks. If you'd have told me that before I sat in it, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> Holy smokes. Done. Now, Done. usually I'm the guy that steps up on modern furniture. We came up with a star piece out of the attic. 
right at the end of the pick. The guy that buys this is going to have to take a test drive. That's <laughs> yeah. the only. Yeah. That's what sells yeah. it. Yeah. You <laughs> never know what you're going to find in the next room you get into. And I think we made a good buy on all the stuff we bought from Marty. I know people that will pay anywhere between five and twenty dollars a piece for them. Look at these cool lamps. Somebody's going to love to have that as a bit of mood lighting. It's a great little fan. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, I had a little white hat. Brand spanking new from the Calgary Tourist and Convention Bureau. Bit of a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's official. you got to come to Calgary now. You've been white hatted. All right, I'll take care of that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now, there's a guy that looks good in a cowboy hat. <laughs> OK. I'm Thanks a lot, Marty. Thanks a lot. What a good guy. Yeah, I really liked him. Yeah. That chair really didn't belong in the attic. That's a lot of money, but I don't feel uncomfortable about it at all. Nor do I. like this area. This looks like moose country, doesn't it? Yeah. We're heading towards Kawartha Lakes. Lots of lakes, cottage country, and it's rich in material. We're going to see Shane and his father, George. So I think you're going to be excited about George's things. He's got all kinds of automobile collectibles, advertising. So we should be getting close. Yeah. It's got to be here. This has got to be here. Yeah, Nobody's this... got a white rose sign like that. Yeah, and the coat And there's cooler. a totem pole on the front. I didn't expect to see a totem pole. Look at that double yeah. shell visible gas yeah. pump. Beauty. How are you? Scott Cousins, how are you? Hey, George. Hi, Shane. I'm Hi. Sheldon. Couldn't help but notice the totem pole driving up. Where'd you get that? They come from Indonesia. That's amazing. They make that in Indonesia. Yeah. How long have you been collecting, George? Oh, man. I. I think I started when I was little collecting license plates. I like uh, Coke machines. I do a lot of the Vendos. I've restored quite a few of those and uh, fixed them up and sold them. We moved out here about six years ago. It was four acres. We built a nice shop, and we're going to have a nostalgia store someday and do the restoration on the stuff. That's a repro yeah. shell sign. Yeah. yeah. It's a really nice globe. It's a figure of they globe. They look great lit up. We heard that George wanted to sell and had a ton of stuff. So what would something like that sell for? In that condition, probably 2,500 bucks. Now, if you were going to sell it to us, what would you want for it oh, in that probably condition? Probably 28. No. <laughs> <laughs> what we didn't hear is that he wants to sell retail out of a store he's going to open up. I can see where this is going. So you live there, yeah. and this is going to be a shop. Correct. Well, did you say he had some stuff in the house as well? Come on in. Come on down. Wow, lots to look at. Holy smokes. Got a real mix in here of stuff. When we get the store up and running, it's going to be kind of like a nostalgia warehouse that's going to have rows and rows of stuff. We're going to do jukeboxes, Coke machines, gas pumps, signs, pinball machines, the whole works. The paint on this is just perfect. I bought it out of Texas. But I think he's a recast. I know that Big Boy was still big in the 60s, because we used to have that deal with our folks that every one of us on our birthday, we get to take a couple friends. And let me guess, I usually picked Big Boy. <laughs> so what do they cost to get it made? By the time I got this shipped up here, if I sold that, it'd be 2500 just to break even. I don't know about you, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George is often paying top dollars for his pieces. And the Salata tea sign, is that being restored? This one I had to repair just a little bit, and I kept all the cracks in it. And he's restoring and putting hours into a lot of them. Boy, did you ever do a nice job on this one? The porcelain was all damaged through there. So I cleaned it off and saw brass, so we polished it up. Can I touch this one? Yeah, take it down, yeah. So as a consequence, George is investing a lot in the pieces that he had. There's a good door push, that Coke one. Yeah. But Scott's persistent. It's the shape that really sets this one off, isn't it? Yeah, it, very Art Deco in shape, but it's yeah. not 20s, it's 40s. I really enjoy restoring the signs. Well, this one's, I restored the ends. Yeah, I was going to say that one. It was in a fire, and I had to do from there over. You did a great job. That's a nice decorator piece for somebody. It's never going to be truly collectible because, like you said, it was half gone, right? Yeah. 
I have trouble selling restored signs. Yeah. People want them original. Like this one is original. What would you want for something like that? Those ones go for about 400. In this condition? Yep. Yeah. 400 seems to me to be steep. I think that's probably more than book price on it. I could do three on it, but I can't do any more than three. I probably got that in it. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. I wish I had this when I was a kid. I never had anything like this. You look, look good that. on that missile, I can tell oh. already, Scott. It's an absolutely beautiful original condition, probably a seven out of 10, which is as good as you can hope to get one that isn't out of the box. It's got the little lever on the side and it makes it click when it drives. The condition on this is just so nice. That's but what, 1950s, early 60s? Yeah, maybe? I think so, yeah. There's a million cars out there. Every kid had a little car, but not very many kids had a rocket. The kid that had that pedal car, he was the most popular kid on the block. I'm afraid to ask, but what do you want for it? It's gonna be hard to part with. It's one of my favorites. There's certain items that you just kind of get attached to and you don't want to sell. And if you don't want to sell it, of course, the price goes up a bit. I could just tell by the look in his face, the intake of breath. Uh, I'd have to get 18 for it. I was afraid I was gonna hear that. <laughs> There's no money in it for us at that, but it is a killer thing. I'm in love with it too much. Well, I grabbed these mostly because they're Canadian. Deal me a hand of blackjack. Scott can pick and play cards. I saw two trays there. The one was an old Molson's porcelain enamel beer tray. The other one was a piece of Canadiana. The other one was rare. So what would you want for the trays? This being rare, I'd have to get 100 and a half, and that would be 100, that one. If I was to take the pair, would you go two? No, I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> Hit me. Yes! Oh, winner every time. <laughs> <laughs> Any more stuff? Maybe something that you're not quite as attached to? I don't know if I told you about the four trailers I have. Very crowded <laughs> in those things. Is you're it? You're going to have to put your climbing boots on. <laughs> the trailers are so packed with stuff. Everything's just piled in there. Holy smokes. Nice and neat. Yikes. Wow. Well, maybe not too neat. Can I actually sort of wiggle in? Get sure. There. Holy cow. If you don't surface in about eight or 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> There's some good stuff back here. I just wish I could get to it. Scott's like a Labrador retriever. I send him in, I tell him there's a bird in there. Go deep. Does he bring it back to you, though? Oh, usually, yeah. In the trailers, they're just piled with stuff. And every time I go in there, I go, oh, yeah, I got that. I forget, you know? Have you had a tetanus shot lately, Scott? No, but I got a feeling I'm going to need one. Oh. What do you see? A rusty 70s pedal car, I think. Now, that's a beater. What would you want for a beater? I'd want 100 for it. It's more rust than it is metal, I think. See, Shell, I think we could probably sell that pedal car for 75 to 100 bucks. That's about it, though. Nice checker cab. Yeah, they, them guys know the good stuff, that's for sure. They uh, tried to get some of my good stuff. What would you want for the checker cab? They're not for sale. OK. Did you do these Coke stools? They went around to one of the bars I built. It's like a $6,000 bar. Six grand. I might sell some of the stuff off, but I'll keep a lot of the stuff to restore. What the heck is this thing? That's the bottom of a carnival ride. So is, that must be the bumper off that That's, car. Are you going to restore that at some point or what? It looks like too big of a job. <laughs> well, then what would you want for the grill? No, the grill would have to go with the car, because then the, the car would be worth nothing. Well, it's worth nothing now. So how much would you sell the grill for and throw the car away? Uh, no. No? OK. Nah. I don't understand where he's coming from. He won't discount what he loves, and he won't discount what he doesn't. It's got to be a disease <laughs> to collect this stuff. I did all that climbing and digging. I got no treat. Oh, elbow. <sighs> Good job. You made it. Yeah. Yikes. 
quite often collectors have a little bit of a problem parting with things. There's lots of stuff in here that we'll be interested in. The only question we've got is, what's the price? Wow, you got a lot of Coke. You got right. a whole row of Vendo 44s over oh, there. Oh, well, you saw that, did you? Yeah. yeah. The Vendo 44 is probably the most popular of all the Coke machines, because it's so small, it can go anywhere in anyone's house. This one looks like it's in reasonably decent original condition. When we restore them, we take the compressors right out and rebuild them. We rebuild the coin mechanisms, uh, do all the body and paint, and when they're ready to go, they're pretty much better than brand new. If you do find one with a rack in it, these racks are gold because uh, they're very hard to find. I used like, stack my beer sideways all the way up in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would sell uh, an unrestored 44 that's uh, complete with the rack and, and compressor and everything for about 2500 bucks. Uh, when we restore them, we usually get about six for them. There's just no way. We gotta buy those things at twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, flip them for two, and let the next guy make the extra five to seven hundred bucks on them. I'm more interested in this beat but rare sign. It's rare because it's got the little guy in it. Yeah, and we welded that up because it was so rusty and it's in the midst of being restored. If you were going to sell this, what would you sell it for in that condition? I'd have to finish it to sell it. I don't mind a few bumps and bruises on it. It shows its age, it shows it was used, and it's easier for me to sell with the bumps and bruises than if it's being restored. If you were going to sell it to me today, That's the way it what is. would you want for it? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's for sale. Okay, well that makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. This big Coke sign, what's the story on that one? It's missing a piece on top with the hangers and it's to advertise your own store. As I recall it, this thing would look a bit like that except it, like it would have the big stripes and then you'd have your name in it. It's a 1940s, 50s sign. Coca-Cola dealer would have come to you and said, hey, we want you to sell our product, we're gonna give you a sign and we're gonna put your name on it. Flip it over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to visualize what the top of that sign looked like before we think about whether or not we need to own it. The problem is, he's gonna dick with that thing. He's gonna touch it up and try to make it better, and in my mind, he's gonna take all the value away from that sign. And what would you sell that for if you were gonna sell it? You'd be up around eight, nine hundred dollars The pickers are exactly like us. They're looking for wholesale prices. They gotta make money, so their job is find the deal, make a bit of money, and still sell it for a good price. And that's exactly what we do. Speaking of Coke, you used to see these all the time. You don't see them as much anymore, the Coke cops. It looks like an original bottle. Yeah, it's the original base on it, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's heavier, yeah. Really popular item. It's almost like a cornerstone for a Coca-Cola collector. Everyone that collects Coke wants to have a Coke cop. So what would you need to get out of the Coke cop? Uh, I was asking 15, but 12. 12 would take it. That's an entry wound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exit wound. <laughs> Just a bit too much with that many bullet holes in. Fortunately, that was a little lower than they were intending. <laughs> I can see them offer me a lot less on things because they have to make money on it, too. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah, that's a nice bike. Nice condition, too. Yeah, yeah, it's a girl's bike. It's attractive, it's original, and this one you haven't restored. It's good enough just the yeah, way it I is, isn't I it? keep yeah, it the way it I is, agree. it's kind of fun. Everyone loves old bikes, particularly bikes out of the 50s and 60s that have that really streamlined look to it. And that had a good look. It was a girl's bike, which was a problem in one sense because they're more common than men's bikes. But it was also good because girls actually ride those bikes today and that's who we're likely gonna sell it to. That's a beaut, eh? <laughs> Does it have the backup brakes? Yeah, it does. It's got the backup. Coaster brakes. It's a bit wobbly, though. I don't think the bike is wobbly. <laughs> I, think, I think that might be you and a few too many suds last yeah, I night. I think it yeah. is. I think it is. That's yeah. a nice bike, though. So what do you want for that? Um, I should get 300 for it. You know, it's getting up there where it's yeah. questionable how much we could make off it, if anything. That's I, a great bike. Would you take 250? Yeah, I'd go to yeah. Done. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad I sold him something. <laughs> I think we have a market for that. We'll make a few bucks. Pay for the gas. <laughs> hey, 
Hey guys, that was nice. Hey. It's nice Thanks to meet you. Thanks a lot. Guys. Take care. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Happy Thank you guys. Yeah. yeah. Big boy made me kind of hungry for a burger. Maybe have some suds. That was quite something. Got to see some neat things, but couldn't buy any. I don't think my wife would be too happy if I brought a semi truck trailer and put it on the front lawn. Do you think so? I'd say you're getting close. We're going to see Tim. We're going to take the Lishman rocker to get an appraisal, get his opinion on it. Well, if he knows something about that rocker, I'm going to be impressed. I'm with you. I, I knew the movie. I didn't even know Lishman made rockers. We know there's profit in that chair. How much? Well, that remains to be seen. Oh, there. Here we go. Yeah. I love doing appraisals because you just never know what someone's going to walk in with. We wanted you to take a look at this for us. Have you ever seen one of these? Yeah, the Lishman chair. They're quite unique. We made a few hundred of them back in the 70s, and they're highly collectible because they're a work of art, is what they are. They're really comfortable. Yeah, yeah, these are really cool. Seen it in books, but it's not something you're going to handle every day. We yeah. stepped up for it. We didn't yeah. get it for 100 bucks. We paid yeah. a grand for it. What do you think something like this would sell in terms of marketability and everything else? You have to take it a couple hours away to the greater Toronto area where you have uh, a collector base, people that really know the stuff, that are really hot for it. If I was wholesaling to a, another dealer, uh, like 2,500 bucks or so. Wow, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you went in with both feet, Yeah. but you're gonna win it. Hey, that's great. I really wanted to see what he had in his drop-off warehouse because he's a picker, buys and sells, we're looking to buy. That's great. Yeah. Thank now you. Let's get up to the house. Yeah. Didn't think we were gonna get anything from Tim other than an appraisal. I've already white hatted him. Did he look good in it? Yeah, he's one of us. Did he look as good as me? I hate to say it, he looked better. I handle a lot of different things, so I have gas and oil things, I got toys. Find anything? Oh, there's all kinds of neat little doodads here and there. Mantiques, if you wanna call them that, the stuff that guys really like. What? Walking stick, 10 bucks. Done. Is that a moose call? I believe it is, yeah. Uh, you can have it for 15 bucks. Everybody knows that they want something unusual. It's a birch bark moose call. It's got to be worth 15 bucks. They come and find it with me, because I get the unusual. Oh, you got a couple of beaver sealers. Yeah, beaver sealers, they're a fairly local jar. They're made over in Wallaceburg, which is a couple hours away from here to the south. And these are the common ones, right? Because yep. they're pointed to the right. Yep. What do you need out of those? Those ones I need 10 bucks each. Done. There's nothing more Canadian than a beaver. I work on high volume, low profit, and just move the stuff. Because, you know, really it boils down to it's just stuff. That's a pitter, isn't it? Yeah. It's yep. got a really nice set of Art Nouveau legs on it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Nice piece of cast iron, that's yeah. for sure. Hit us with your best shot, Tim. 80 bucks. That's a good piece. Is it? Yeah. 80. Done. This is fun. Dealing with those guys was pretty easy. They're on the same page where I'm at. This big uh, dirt mover. Steam shovel. Original paint. Nice shape. It should retail about two and a quarter. Real nice red and black digger, Canadian made. Every company under the sun made that digger at one point in time. The difference with this one was condition. It was about 9.5 out of 10. To find toys in original paint is really good. They're getting harder and harder to find and they bring the premium dollar. I need a hundred bucks for it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let the next guy make a few bucks and then he can come back with his profit and buy more. Is this an American company? Crimco, they were across Canada. I know that for sure because I've seen them on out of different places. It was a chocolate milk sign. Very unusual, nice size, good crisp image. Probably, I would say, 30s because it's embossed. How much did you say you wanted for that? Uh, 40 bucks. Is that your best? 30? 30. <laughs> All right, just because you're shaking. Done! <laughs> no, no regrets. I'm happy to move the stuff along, let somebody make some more money. What do you want for the blanket? You want to buy my packing blanket? Five bucks. Done. This is the quick speed pick. I love it. That's Any more. traps or anything? Uh, I've been looking for a good bear trap. We'll have to go to the front, and I'll open that up, and we'll look up front there. Yeah, there it is. Oh. Now, there she be. Yeah, that's a blacksmith's bear trap. They've welded something in the springs. Yeah, they've made it so you can't use it. Right. They don't want you using these traps anymore.
Finally, I found a real bear trap. It was an old blacksmith made bear trap. A lot of people that have cabins, that's just such a big, impressive thing. It's a cool thing. Piece of history. What do these sell for? They're generally about 400 bucks or so. In this condition? In that condition. Because it's pretty rusty, right? Yep. What do you need out of this? <sighs> I'd like 250, but you can have it for 200. That's what I got invested in it, so. You know, I've been looking for a bear trap all over Canada. <laughs> yeah, shake the man's hand. Yeah. 200 it is. This yeah. is great. <laughs> <laughs> this is some good picking. That best picking we've had so far. Yeah. We could stay here picking all night if we can. Delco batteries. <laughs> yeah, that's a battery stand. Comes all apart. It's a really cool piece. That would have sat in a service station probably in the 1960s. Great display piece for guys that have oil bottles and cans and all that stuff. Well, any guy that's tried to put together a service station display or a gas station display will want that piece for his collection. What do you yeah. need out of that? I need 100 bucks out of it. And all the pieces are right there for it. Done. Is that a Massey? No, I don't think it's Massey. There are a lot of people that buy tractor seats. They'll weld a piece of metal to the bottom of them and use them as bar stools. Never have any trouble selling a good tractor seat. What did you want for all these seats? There's six seats there, I think, all together. 300 bucks for the six. Several weeks ago, we were at a pick, and the guy wanted 300 bucks for one seat. Shake the man's hand. Thank you. Thank you. The guys are welcome to come back anytime. That's your new lucky hat, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Brand spanking new. We've been doing well, but I think we better get this packed up and get on the road before it's too dark. <laughs> Watch your fingers. Yeah, so this is a whole mater. It's just a wall hanger anyhow at this yeah. point. So. It's a pretty seat. Okay. We can use it as a rack to put some of our items on for our next sale, and we can put a price tag on. I guess with the white hat and you guys loaded, <laughs> I've been picked. Yeah, you've been picked. This made the whole trip for us, this pick. Yeah. It was a pleasure, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Tim, you look good in that cowboy hat. Well, I got to look good in something. <laughs> Take care. See you later. When you give a white hat to a guy, you're giving him an invitation to come to Calgary to visit the city. I agree. Hamilton, eh? I can't just smell the steel. Did you get to the cash machine? <laughs> you know, as usual, you'll be the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to drive? No, I don't think so. I got the map. All I can say is it's good to be back in southern Ontario. Haven't been here for a while. Looks like we're going to do a nice big triangle of picking in this part of the country. I'd like to call it the Picker's Golden Horseshoe as opposed to the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping that we can get some screaming deals on some stuff we can take out west and make some money on. We're off to see Gary this morning in Hamilton. I'm always worried when I'm going to somebody's house that it's gonna be a show and tell. This guy, as I understand it, is a bit of a collector, and collectors can be real tough to deal with, but we'll see. Right yeah. there it is with the boxes. Yeah, look at all the boxes in front of there. What the heck's in those boxes? You got any money for the meeting? Oh, yeah. I got a dime. Maybe we should put that in just to make sure it's going to be a good pick. Hey. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Wow. You got a lot of stuff here. That's for sure. Stuff, stuff, stuff. I buy and sell stuff to make a living. I've been a voracious garage sailor for 30 plus years. Saturday morning comes. I'm the guy that arrives first. Meeting Gary was like a step back in time. But it's all stuff I love. Well, I'm just going to take a quick look around. As I was scanning the room, I'm looking for gems because a guy like him's going to have the odd gem. Well, this is what I decided to do with my life, become a collector of ephemera. It's not the material that, that, that I'm interested in. It's a, the soul of the material. I don't think I've ever seen that many Velvet Elvis paintings in one place. It's taken me about 15 years to collect these half a dozen that I've got here. The uh, Elvis Presley Foundation went after the people that painted these in Mexico and ordered them to stop painting them. Thank you. Thank you very much.
that's a bit of overkill, isn't it, to stop a guy in Mexico from making a buck? Well, Good luck. Literally a buck at yeah. the time, yeah. right? Well, Velvet Elvises are the worst of the worst and the best of the best, depending upon where you come from. I've had lots of Velvet Elvises in the past. They used to be really funky and collectible. Then they died off. Now they're getting come back again. Hey, there was one Velvet Elvis that was quite appealing because the guy had a double chin quite like mine. <laughs> that was the fat Elvis period, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> I could kind of relate to that period. My Velvet Elvises uh, are, are not for sale. It's not a matter of the value of them. It's just a matter of that, you know, I love these guys. It'd be like, you know, me leaving a girlfriend. <sighs> oh, love my tender. Pretty well anything else, my arm can be twisted. I notice you've got, looks like a poster in the corner from a movie. Yeah, that's an old movie that had a dope tie-in. It was a really interesting poster from probably the early 50s, back when they were trying to outlaw comic books and they were doing the anti-drug propaganda. I love the wording. She looks like an angel, does the work of the devil. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now, your airplane mm -hmm. either got the tabletop version or the ashtray, or the ashtray version. The, yeah. This is a tabletop version. What would you need to get out of your airplane? Uh, I'd probably need to get it somewhere around 500 bucks. Wow. Where I come from, that's full bore retail on that. In fact, I sell them for less than that, more yeah. retail. The thing is, we can't buy retail. Even if I love it, I can't pay retail for it. Your circus poster, mm -hmm. probably 40s, looks to me, 40s, I'd, 50s. I'd say that. Made to just slap up on a wall and, and leave it in town and, and when you left. Yeah, exactly. Right? What would you need out of that if you were going to sell it? Oh, probably a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, I see again, you know, that's sort of retail on them. Uh, with the stuff that I love and have a passion for, my prices are going to be a little bit higher. Yeah, it but sounds it, like it, you got a love and a passion for just about everything. What's the purpose in having something in your life if you don't love it? I see you got some tins back there. Is yeah. it okay if I go back and take yeah, a look? Yeah, absolutely. I spotted three tins, and I took the one that I thought was the least expensive first just to get a sense of where he was coming from with his price. The reason why this one is sort of attractive is because of obviously the image on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably American. So what would you want for that? So I thought if I could get that for five bucks, I'd sell it for 20 and maybe make 15 bucks. Um, 25 bucks? So you know the retail real well. Back it goes. Okay, let's see. Now the radios, is there anything in there? I don't see anything there that's starry. He's got a rack of radios, and you can tell he's got a good eye. You got that little goofy little one that looks like a bit like a robot. What is that? This one here? Yeah. Oh, no, that's a, that's actually a cigarette holder. Oh, cool. It had a space age look to it. When he pulls it out, it's actually even cooler, frankly, than what I thought it was. You'd put your cigarettes in here yeah. and your matches in here. You'd have it on your coffee table so when your guests came over, they would go, oh, there, I'll have a smoke. What so. would you need for something like that? That I'm not going to part with. I've, <laughs> uh, I've, uh, Why is it that everything I like you don't <laughs> want to part with? He really did love his things, but he's an accumulator. Guys like Gary are tough because He's paid nothing for the stuff he buys, but that doesn't mean he loves it any less. It's not that it's got any value to it. I just like it. Well, so do I. <laughs> the design of it. So I, I changed my gears, and I said, OK, forget the collectibles. I'm going to go flip through a few records and see if I sure. can find anything. Sounds like a plan. If he's got something that's turned on its side and shoved in a slot, I might have a better chance of getting something off him because there's more of them, and they're less visible to him at all times. You got the floor reinforced in this place? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. There's about 15,000 albums here. Let's see if I can find some ugly ducklings here. A lot of people are surprised about this, but records are one of the hottest things right now. Ah, there's an ugly duckling, though. And the stuff that sells best is Canadian psych rock, Canadian prog rock, because it's really rare. Hey, Gary. Yeah. What do you want for this one? I work much better when there's a stack rather <laughs> than on an individual level. Maybe a little guilt's going to set in because he hasn't sold us anything yet. And if I put together some records, I can maybe make a deal. The candy goody gumdrops. I have never heard of them. View? Obviously, you have. You bought it. Scott all of a sudden gets into a little bit of a zone. W? It's not original. There it is. And I know that, uh, you know, loaded. leave him alone, go for a coffee, which is actually what I did. I got okay. your two sticky fingers and your, I got a Frank Zappa. We're only in it for the money. OK. Oh, New York Dolls, too. Do you have New York Dolls? Let's see. 
Yeah, loaded. I'm sort of buying partially for my own collection here. And then I came back. On the, the Rolling Stones ones are good mostly because they're Andy Warhol covers. That's right. But you're paying everything. Everything is to do with the Andy Warhol zipper cover. That's right. right? Yeah. Okay, Gary, you asked me to put a pile together. I put a pile together. Let me see what you want for that to see if we can do some business. Okay, let me just do a count here. It looks like you picked out the real cherries here. Uh, well, of course. You're just flattering me. <laughs> just flattering me to get my money. So you got 25 albums here. Yeah. Some of these are worth large, you know. I don't like to hear that, okay? Well, I don't like to hear that. Not to like go out the door. For 25 of these records? 400 bucks. So that's basically you're looking at 15 to 20 dollars each. I was originally thinking a wholesale price for me was between five and ten, knowing there's a couple in there that I'm gonna pay more for. So that would have put me at two to two fifty, and I, I think I'm stretching it for me to uh, to make money on it to go to two seventy-five. Okay, well, there were some other things that you said you were interested in? I wanted to see if there's any way I could sort of get his mind off that price. You told me you had a fan. Okay. Where's that? That's down in the basement. Grab a couple things to throw in the pile and get, get the price down. Okay, well, why don't we go look at the fan? Okay. You go down and... You're, you're in good hands, Gary. Okay. And here's the big one. It's made in the United States by a company called Born Auto. Okay. But Electra Home and Kitchener bought Born Auto fans and put their logo on it. So what would you be looking at on that? Um, 100 bucks. People like big, industrial-looking fans. And here's the mini version of the big one that was downstairs. So what would you want for the little one? 50 bucks. They were a paired set, so you could have the big fan and you could have the little fan sitting on a table beside it. I'm thinking, yeah, I was thinking, if you group the records in with the fans, I was thinking 375. Mm, I don't mind being crowned, and you know that's part of the whole negotiation process. Make it four, and we got a deal. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. You got a super deal on that vinyl. Well, I sure <laughs> hope so. I like people that uh, grind with a smile. Most people do business with me, leave here with a smile on their face. <laughs> well, I, I am, because you know what? There's a few albums that I want for my own collection in there, and I can sell a couple. Okay. Like, I wish more people in the antique and collectibles business were like Scott. For me, that was a successful pick. I got a bunch of really good records. I love records. My wife loves records. My friends love records. So for me, it was a good pick. And I think we'll make some money to boot. I'm happy if Scott's happy. Gary, it was a pleasure. Yeah. You're a real collector. It's always a pleasure to meet a real Absolutely. collector. Absolutely. OK, we'll see you later. All right. You know, we didn't get a whole lot of what you'd call traditional collectibles, but we can make some money off those records. Kicking and screaming, I'll drag you into the 21st century. I'd like to see you do that. <laughs> <laughs>what I love about this part of the country is it's been around for so much longer and it's been so heavily populated compared to Western Canada that there's a ton more stuff here oh look at that look there's a coke oh, button on the side buttons. of that building I gotta stop see if it's for sale you're the ultimate picker Scott for every coke button you see in Calgary you'll see 40 here I drove by and I saw your coke button on the front of the door and the person inside gave me your number to give you a call to see if you wanted to sell it you know the coke side the big Coke sign. How much? You're not serious. No, no, I offered more than that. I offered 300, but obviously we're miles apart. Well, thanks for your time, Rick. Okay, talk to you later, bye. <laughs> How much?
1,400. Run, don't walk, yeah. right? <laughs> well, no, no, doesn't hurt no to try, done, right? Yeah. Right? No harm done. Did you get a good night's sleep? You ready for picking? Brutal. I was up for four hours watching poker on TV. <laughs> and I figure I know when to hold them and I know when to fold them. <laughs> you were all pumped up about Christy. We got our work cut out for us today. Christy's just a huge show. It covers just a huge area. There's literally hundreds of vendors, hundreds of booths set up. When Sheldon and I go to a show like this, one of the things we're looking for is stuff we don't see every day. We have arrived. Oh, here oh, we yeah, go. There are the tents, yeah? Yeah. It's a good day for picking. It's a great day for picking. Yeah, I haven't been this excited to be at a show for years and years. Gates open, 8 o'clock, and the adrenaline's rushing. And... Look at that picture over there, eh, Scott? That's hilarious. One of the first things I noticed was an oil painting. We literally had walked in the door. It was the first thing we saw. It's actually better as you get closer yeah, to it. Yeah, it's not bad. Thomas Mitchell. Worked with the group of seven, yeah. You've got 300 dealers with six or 700 tables. What do you need for it? One. And you're saying, am I going to spend 400 bucks on the first thing I see? I'm going to make a call on that one, Scott. Yeah? We'll be back. That's a great picture. Well, I'm phoning my art dealer, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Doug, it's Sheldon. Uh, can you get right back to me? Uh, give me a call. I need your help. Sooner is better than later, Doug. Serendipity. Let's see if it's there in a few minutes and yeah. uh, keep, keep picking. Okay, so how do you want to do this? When Sheldon and I go to a show like this, we generally split up. You go yeah. your way, I'll go mine. Because he likes different things than I like. What's the price on the Addison? I need uh, $150 for it. Wow. Great piece. You got a price on the chair for me? $35. Would you take 100? No, I wouldn't, thank you. And we're trying to cover as much ground as we can as quickly as we can. I love this. Yeah, I spotted some bellows. They've got that north wind mass carved right into them. They look good and they're functional. These were as good as it gets for that sort of category of item. Take 250? Today, yes. What do you have on the Joe? I bought all of it for $100, including all the outfits, the rifles. I think your price is fair, but price is fair. there's no much, there's nothing I can make off it. That's Can I ask you about this? Napkin holder. It kicks out an IQ question. Is yeah, it? put a coin in, a little card to pop out. This one's probably from around, you know, the you know, 40s, 50s, yeah. maybe earlier. Would you take 75? I got to pick and turn it over. That's fine. 75 it is. Yeah. Nothing cheap there. Guys, stuff will all be a fortune. There's interesting things, but they all seem to be priced way too high for me to be able to buy them and make money on them. So I, I, I'm going to keep looking and see if there's that one piece that jumps out at me. Girly stuff. Is this your chunk of birch bark? Yes, it is. What can you tell me about it? I would say it's probably about 1940s. Yeah, I love it. Did you say 100 bucks? OK, yes, sure. Sold. OK. OK, that's where I want to go. Unfortunately, I'd sell that for about a quarter of that price. I just don't know that there's anything to be made off that. I'm seeing 80% of the stuff is the same old stuff I see at every show, price too high. That is the ugliest phone I've ever seen. We're, it's not stuff I can make money on. We just can't do it. 2200 for the set. Well, I know sooner or later I'm going to find something, but I, I have to admit to being a bit discouraged. I'm still waiting on the call from my buddy that knows art and has all that information at his fingertips. I'm waiting and waiting, and you know what? The heck with the detail. If I'm not getting the information, maybe I'll take a shot on it. Ah. Uh, my beavers are gone. If you hesitate, a chap came in about 10 minutes after you were here. Yeah. And he just said, I'll take it. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I'm still waiting for the call. Got to go out and find something else killer. I love that color. I just don't know how the heck I would want to carry that thing. Beauty. Oh, yeah. King's Plate winner. It's a great image. Early horse racing up to 1905. The King's Plate, which is now the Queen's Plate. What do you think? I mean, that's killer, isn't it? You don't see them. You just don't see them in the original frame, too. What do you have on it? 950. Are you hung up on that price? No, I'm, I'm negotiable. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I walked away. I was afraid of the bolt of lightning coming down at me. It's early. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with your first good sale of the day. Would you take five? West corner of the show. Give me seven and it's gone. Split the difference at six and we got ourselves a deal? Done. All right. I mean, I think we could double up on that one. I was a little jealous that you picked that one. <laughs> you can be my partner. Good eye. I'm heading yeah. that way. I'm behind you. I could see it from a mile away. There was a circus banner. I've dealt with them before. I wasn't sure if it would be 500 or 5,000, but I knew it was something I wanted to take a look at. Oh. Yeah, killer. Wow. Is it right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's signed down there. Virtually every rodeo, old time rodeo, had a trick rider if they could find one. And there are a couple ladies actually in action. I just love the image. Yeah, the image the is. The image is killer, isn't the it? The image is killer. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that's a great thing for Calgary. How you Hi, doing? Man. Good. How are you? Good. A couple of Alberta boys here looking for a bargain. <laughs> we like this. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get it? It came out of a restaurant in Montreal, actually, so it's part of the decor there, so it's really? the 1960s. What do you think about five? We thought we'd see how, how aggressive we could be and see if we could buy that. We're here, we're doing some picking. Yes. We're buying low, we're selling medium. Right. We're going to turn it over. I don't want to insult you, but I wanted to offer you 500 bucks for it. I couldn't believe it when you offered him 500 bucks. Can't do it, so. Usually when a guy's got prices like that, if you offer him, like, almost half of what he's got on it, what's your best offer? He's not biting. 950 is our best, yeah. No room to maneuver. No room to maneuver. All right. right. Scott, what do you think? Yeah. I got somebody in mind, but I don't, uh, yeah, I don't exactly. think there's enough potential room in it for us to make that a kind of investment. Well, I share the booth with somebody else, so you can speak to him. We're looking at this piece here. What can you do for us? We can't really go down. Would you take 800 on it? We love to do it, but we can't. Well, you don't have to love to. I'll just peel it out, and there <laughs> you go. It's eight bills in your pocket. There's some profit in it for you, and maybe a few bucks in it for us, too. We bought this two weeks ago in Montreal. It actually was hung up in a restaurant. It took a lot of money to get it off of them. So you're saying you're not budging? We can't really budge on 850. this. 8.50. You know, Jamie, 850? What do you say, man? Jamie's looking. <laughs> did you see that smile? Jamie's uh, saying, yeah, let's go. Grab the 850. <laughs> grab the 850 and run. Right? Yeah, look at it. He's nodding. Grab the 850 and run. He just said it. Come on, let's run. let's get a deal going here. Come on. Jamie. I know what he's saying. He's saying we're gonna walk. Uh, he's I said, already walked in my mind a few minutes ago. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Crunch time. 850. You guys say yo or no, yay or nay. Uh, we're, we're 850, it's a deal, it's not a deal. How about 900? Now I gotta talk over with Jamie. Holy that's the best I can do. smokes, man! 850 it is, and that's our last offer. Yay or nay, guys? I'm sorry, I... No I harm done. I'm, thank you very I'm much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Well, we'll walk and see what happens. Gave her a shot. Too good a shot, probably, eh? I got nothing against them, and... I hope they come back. <laughs> I love that thing. And I still think it was a good deal at 950. But my problem is, I'm mad now. Can't win them all. <laughs> hey, Scott, you're grabbing a coffee. Can you get me one, too? Sure. And almost everybody marks their stuff up so they can come down a little bit. I just got mad. Thanks. Thank you. And Scott bought me a coffee. That rarely happens. The first guy just made me so mad. Yeah. I just, I didn't, yeah. I just didn't even, I don't want to give him my money. I hear you, Scott. And now I know he's really mad because he didn't even ask me to pay him for the, my coffee. <laughs> There's a nice tool cabinet. Yeah, but what's that? It's a copper viewing casket. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny just to have as a coffee table? Oh, a coffee table. Killer. How about 100 even? Where did Sheldon go? How about 110? Sold. Scott ain't going to be happy. I bought a folk art. Mountie. Cannot find him. This isn't Scott's sort of thing, but uh, we now own it. It's going to guard our purchases. I put a leash on that guy. I know it's a big show. I know sooner or later I'm going to find something. Sure enough, so I have great old White Owls counter store display. It's got everything you want. It's got the great graphic. It's big. It's old. It's both a Canadian and an American company, so it's got double coverage there. I'd like to know, what do you have on it? 
1800. The only problem with it was it was expensive. And did you have any room in it? I'd be 1500. I'm not seeing a lot of stuff I can buy volume to make money on. I thought I'm gonna buy the best thing or the best two or three things at this show. Are you open to package deals? Oh, definitely. And your Coke button, how much do you have on that? Uh, it's 595. So I'm thinking to myself, wow, we, we can sell that Coke button. Interested in that. Mm -hmm. Interested in the Coke button. Mm -hmm. If you take both pieces, I'll give you the owl for 13 and the Coke dot for five. Yeah. You went from 1800 on the white owl to 1800 for the pair, I think. Yeah. Ah. See, what I was thinking, I don't, I don't want you to be mad at me, but mm -hmm. I, I was thinking 1500 would make yeah. me happy. Because yeah. then I figure I'm paying 1000 for that and 500 for that. Uh, you really are a picker. <laughs> I, I am, all right. Let's take a break and uh, just talk about it for a minute. And we'll see if okay. there's something else that we can maybe add to the Absolutely. sweet in the pot. Go for it. Okay. All right. Is there anything you see here that you... Well, there's a couple things around the corner here. I'm just looking, though, for the pieces that are quick to flip. Like, I think that sign's saleable. Yeah. Take a quick peek at that Creole. It's a big one. You don't see the big ones that often. Oh, yeah, it's a little age, right? This white owl piece is cool, too. Oh, yeah. That's the clincher, Scott. Uh, then we threw in the white owl poster. And that'll perhaps help sell the, the white owl itself. So that could only help. What we're thinking here is mm -hmm. the white owl, and this is obviously a natural to go mm -hmm. with it. Absolutely. The Coke button, of course, we talked about, and the telephone sign. And mm -hmm. we're trying to get ourselves to a number that you can live with on mm -hmm. all of that. I was thinking 15, you were thinking 18. Mm -hmm. We're thinking two grand for the, the four pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm, you're gonna have to go back to school now. <laughs> <laughs> nice driving. Yeah, that ain't going to work. So what, what can you do? Um, I'll do you two on this guy, which brings us up to two thousand, and I'll do you another uh, two hundred on the bell sign. It's twenty two hundred. I was That's, gonna say twenty one. How about we no, do it? No? Twenty two hundred is, is a really really fair price. I brought a certain amount of money to spend, and it was either gonna be a little bit on a lot of items or a lot on a little items. Okay, one last shot. 22. 2300 and you throw the Creole in. Done. All Done. right. I mean, it was a great buy for us, and, and he showed he can play the game. He knows what he's doing. Good, Thank to, do much, guys. Good to do business with him. Appreciate it. Thank okay, you very thanks. much. The value of $2,000 is apparent to him. That was funny. Right. I'll go home and lick my wounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't apparent to some other people. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, this, maybe we can use this as a negotiating tool. I surprised myself on that trick rider sign because I was so mad when I walked away, I didn't think that for any amount of money would I buy that sign. Will you take 10 bucks for this? What would I have on it? 14, absolutely. He promises to put it to good use. But then Sheldon and I started talking about it and thinking, you know what? We, we can still maybe double up on that thing and back in Calgary. It's a killer image. That's the problem. And I hate, I hate going back and eating crow. So I guess, the profit got the better of me. <laughs> I've come to negotiate. Yeah. I've come to negotiate. So uh, we're still interested in trick riding here. Yeah, it's nice. Did you guys have a chance to talk? 950. Oh, hold it. 950. You said, weren't you at 900? But you yeah, had you to were at 900. But you were going to yeah, talk. Yeah, we're going to talk at 900. Didn't work. It was just as painful the second time as it was the first time. But hey, it's it's business. If we can't negotiate on price, would you throw in that little deco ash stand just to just to sweeten the pot? We'll uh, nine, a nine, a nine, nine fifty, 50 yeah. with the deco. Yes. Okay, no problem. All right. At least you got him to throw in that ash. Tray. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's tear it out. Let's just get it rolled up before he changes his mind and he wants a thousand for it. <laughs> Congratulations, man. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll make some money for sure on the carnival sign. You're a hard man, but it's good right. stuff. And an extra few hundred bucks on the ashtray. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> <laughs> He's 200 and he doesn't bite. Just because it was so much fun the first time, would you take 100? Oh, God. <laughs> no. <laughs>
Well, that was a hard negotiation, don't you think? You got that right. Although you did get this out of them, which was better than nothing, right? Better than a kick in the pass, yeah. I Yeah. I spotted the water skier motion lap from about 200 feet away. I got to talk to you about your motion lap. Mm -hmm. It looks to me it, it works, I presume. It worked beautiful. I wish I'd brought a generator. That's a killer lap. And it's best condition one I've ever seen. Right. The broken one sold last week on eBay for 350. The perfect one sold three years ago on eBay for 3500. So the price of that lamp is somewhere above 350, <laughs> and could still be north of 3500. And I went, because it had a little sign on it saying, "Make me an offer." And I thought, well, I can't make an offer even remotely close. I could see paying four or five hundred for it, but even then, I'm stretching. I never dreamed I would ever offer somebody 500 bucks for a motion lamp, but I'm offering it to you now. Well, I never thought I'd get married and I've done it twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the nicest one I've ever seen, and I would like to own that. Well, we're close. Yeah. Yeah, 500 would be fine. We have a deal, sir. Deal. It was a great buy, because that is flat out perfect. There's a killer bench right there. Scandinavian pine, original paint. Love it. I love yeah. it too, but it's big. What do you say? Yeah. I could get buried in that, don't you think? 550? Does that work? Sold. Yeah. Okay. I don't like lifting heavy things, but Sheldon apparently doesn't care about lifting heavy things and transporting them all the way back to Calgary. Man, do you grunt a lot when you move furniture? Yeah, well. I had no idea. Look at my little pinhead Mountie. He's ridiculous. <laughs> Isn't he good? Why did you buy him? Ooh. All right. Hey. <laughs> See, you don't have to join a health club. If we don't double on this, you are paying for dinner for the rest of the year. I really had a good day today. I mean, we made some great buys. Actually packing it up, I'm thinking, wow, we did really well today. We'll make some money. The life of a picker. I was so happy to have that white owl sign because I've done a lot of white owl tins over the years, but I've never seen a store display. I love that stuff. It's not as heavy as I thought it would be, this white owl thing. If I throw him, does it make any difference? I'm only ashamed of one thing we bought. When we triple up on him. <laughs> that Mountie is the ugliest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Let's go, man. We were wheeling, we were dealing. I just, I had a great day today. This is what I live for. That was some good picking. That, that was, was <laughs> <laughs> that was finger picking good. <laughs> Show them where are we going. See that fork in the road? Yeah. Take, Take it. it. <laughs> Scott and I are heading over to see Steve DeRoche, a local dealer, and he's going to give us some appraisals on some of the things we picked up at the Christie Show. I'm an antique dealer. I've been in this business uh, probably better than 20 years. If we made a mistake on a piece, we're going to unload it, get our money out of it, not going to ship it all the way back to Calgary. Steve Scott Cousins. Steve Rose. Hi, Steve. Sheldon Smithens. Hi, Sheldon. This is a little bit off the, off the beaten track. Scott and I are saying it's really a one of a kind. 950. Yeah. With the deco. OK, no problem. Let's get a little confirmation that we've got something good here. Oh, this is in really nice condition. Great subject matter, antioquy type stuff. They're called tent banners. They actually used to put them right out on a wagon going from town to town, and you're probably in the $1,200 to $1,500 range. We're taking it to rodeo yeah. country, yeah. so. Well, it's, you're taking it to the right place. Yeah, real easy, quick flip. It's not all about money, but that was too good an item to leave. It was just too good for where we come from and for the people we know that love that stuff. You see, I got my motion lamp fired up for you, so. Yeah, these were made by Econolite. They started Quite earlier than this lamp, they started in the 20s, but this one's up in the late 50s. 
I had a bit of butterflies because I was half expecting him to say that we overpaid for it. I never dreamed I would ever offer somebody 500 bucks for emotional lamp. 500 would be fine. Absolutely pristine. You got the holy grail there. This lamp is between 35 and 4,500 dollars. Wow. When those numbers came out of his mouth, I just was shocked, absolutely shocked. On a good day, you might do a little better than that. Wow. Hey. And the water skier is, the water you skier You got a buyer for it? <laughs> <laughs> when he told us what it was worth, I realized I'm not keeping that. It's going to be sold. Thank you, Thank you. Joe. You have a good day, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. There's another pick to be had. Beautiful country. Well, let's go. We're on our way to Roger's place. We're going to see a 150-year-old barn with unbelievable stuff. Here on the right, yeah. Oh, for sale. Hello. There you Hi. are. Hey, Hi, you'd be Roger. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi Roger Sheldon. Nice to How are you? What's the story here? You had an old barn, and you wanted to get rid of some stuff. Old barn, drive shed workshop. We've got a lot of old junk around. Some was here when we bought 25 years ago from the old homestead, the original farmers. But it's good stuff. You guys will like it. Good junk. That's exactly what we like. Excellent. Yeah. I'll lead the way. Just follow me. <laughs> Everything's for sale at rock bottom prices. Yeah, Roger's what I'd call a gentleman farmer. He's a pretty sophisticated guy. He knows what he's doing. Uh, let's tell you if it's windy or not. Yeah. Just in case you hadn't noticed. He's a little bit rambunctious, I would say. Take a close look. I don't want you missing anything. And I think that there's going to be a little bit of fireworks during the course of the day. That's my guess. Help yourself. We oh, want yeah. anything we can buy cheap and make money on. I walked into the first room, and I just took a look around. Wow. So then I saw Sheldon start climbing. Kind of curious to find out, is there some quality or just straight quantity? So I dove raid, well, I want to say in, but I sort of dove up. It was a pretty good vantage point from up there. Is this the mortar or the pestle? People love those things. They're a great display item. Man, this thing is heavy. That's why the biggest use is to grind up their herbs and spices. So 10? Oh, OK, so. D done. That was an icebreaker, that mortar bowl. All right, I think it's showtime here. It's really essential that game on happens. If it happens easy and early, then at least we're all on the same page. Hey, Roger, there's a little sleigh under there. It's solid. It works. Just take 10 bucks for that? Come on, you got to do a little bit better on that one. 11. <laughs> did, you, did you say 15? Well, we'll just get the ball rolling. Okay. 15 it is. OK. I found something that I would normally never buy, but I like the color of it. It's that's, a meat grinder, that's, right? That's a good one, yeah. I would normally just kick a meat grinder over. I wouldn't buy one for a buck. But there are some people that are decorating their country kitchens, and it's red. And they want the red color. We're going to grind you right now, because we don't normally buy meat grinders. We made a lot of pork sausage with that. So what you're telling me is it's paid for itself over and over again, so you'll let it go cheap. Well, no. Well, I'll give you 10 bucks for this, just because it's red. If it was any other color, I don't want it. OK, sold. There's a whole basket of grinders there, yeah, too. Yeah, you know, and I left them, because they're not red. I like the process more than I do the money. There's a lot of good junk there in those boxes and cans there. Apparently, you're walking by the good junk, Scott. See, there's another red thing. That's uh, for, for the garden, too. The corn seeder, it's something you don't see a lot of. The seeds fall down from the bin, goes right, to, right down the tunnel, and it drops in one at a time. You just walk along. Somebody will stick that in the corner of their cabin, and it'll look great there. And I'm going to offer you the five bucks on this, because it's got pieces missing. Look, Look, it's missing I, the back. Are you it's trying missing to make a strap. million bucks or what? Well, no, but I'm trying to make at least five or ten on it. But that's red. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's red too, yeah. yeah. So what do you want for it then? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. I tell people. you what, Roger, that Teresa's a lucky woman. She's got humor constantly. Can you say she? that a little louder, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Scott, did you check out the guitar? Yeah, take it. That's an antique. Oh yeah, there's a guitar. Look at that, it's an old Quebec guitar. 
Norman, unfortunately, the back of it's pulled right off. That, that's well worth the five bucks you're going to spend on it. For five bucks, you get a deal. OK, that's good, because when you see the other one, the other so one is So that's not just the case for this one? No, no, oh, the okay. other one is, is, is the valuable one, and it's worth a heck of a lot more than five bucks. So 10? I'm always hoping for an old Martin or an old Gibson, an old Epiphone, but pull out this old, weird steward, I think it was. But it looks nice, doesn't it? And they made a bunch of those for the department stores in the 30s, 40s, and early 50s. There are some guys like Jack White from the White Stripes. He plays old okay. guitars like this. Excellent. And, and well worth the $15. Uh, OK. You got okay. a deal. OK. That, that made my pick so far. Let's go down and check out the shop. <laughs> All right. So here we oh. go. Whole new ball game. I immediately spotted a photo on the wall. Hey, that's interesting. I think Scott was trying to nudge me out of the way. Well, I think we both reached <laughs> for it at the same time because as soon as you can't miss that when you see it there, yeah, right? Yeah. I just happened to have the edge on him this time because I'm a little older and a little wiser. Uh, I think <laughs> it was more that I thought I was getting my hand bitten off if I reached for it. <laughs> that's an old photograph. Those Indians were, were heading to the reservation after they were forced to go there. Roger had a pretty good idea that he had something good there. Yeah, this is one of the more valuable prints right here. And it's not a $50 picture. Yeah, that's a great little photo. It's got everything in there. It's got bows and arrows, a few muskets. You see the horses at the back, the teepees, the cooking pots. You on this you have a price in mind. It's 200 on... bucks. I'd say 100. 150, not a penny less. You know, I, Sheldon, I know it's good. I just don't know how good it is. It's very good. Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't want to leave without it, because it could be the key to our day. Why don't I bend over backwards this time, because we'll get you back on something else. 150 it is. Could be a famous image. It could be just one-off image. We don't yeah. know that. Why don't we just put that back up there for safekeeping? That's a gamble. I don't mind taking it all. I'm guessing that's the barn. That's it. I keep looking at that barn and those wide planks. That's for sale, too. We think it's built in the 1860s, and they even have the old hex signs to keep the devils out of the barn. Wow. Oh, yeah. Just the sort of structure you don't see in our part of the world. Wow. Look at the timbers. Is this thing safe to walk on? Yeah, yeah, I, I go up there all the time. You want to feel how heavy this is and tell me if you want to move this across the country before we ask Roger about it? Um. I guess it depends on whether he's got a price per pound or not. No, it's not by pound. 20 bucks. Sold. OK, load it up. Do I have a say in this? Absolutely. I've got a spot for you to sleep for the rest of the pick. Yeah, thanks for that. The setting is great. I love the barn. And Roger is also colorful. Well, this one's promising. It says junk. It says mom's junk. Is mom's junk? Can I look at it? Sure. $5 for the box. This one's cheese ball 70s with the cheese ball 70s coffee okay, pot. Okay, a dollar for the box. My last offer right now. <laughs> Roger. Just, just give, <laughs> give us a second to make isn't, sure. To isn't know. Teresa going to give you a rough time? She's not here. Getting a kick out of them. We're having some fun. And uh, that's why Scott and I are pickers, is uh, we're here for the fun of it. You'll be losing sleep tonight if you don't take it. And to make a buck along the way. Uh, I'll be losing sleep if I do. How about this? Watch this. He thought that cash register was the holy grail. That's an oldie. There's no question about it. You know they wholesale for two to 400 And I always have a laugh with guys like him because he's pointing to stuff that I couldn't care less about. You're getting to the good stuff now. 1894. Old don't always mean gold. And we're looking at stuff. That, what is that? That he's going, oh, why would they want that? Perfect. It's an old solid oak butcher table. How big is it? Uh, seven or eight feet, three-quarter inch. How about old doors? He obviously had no interest in that table whatsoever. That would make a great kitchen table in a big country home, wouldn't it, Sheldon? Yeah. Make Question an offer. Is, I'm feeling weak. <laughs> we got to stand it up and make sure that it's actually going to going to stay together. Man, it's heavy. It, it'll hold 300 pounds, 400 um, pounds. It had honest wear. It had green alligator finish on it. Oh, yeah, that'll work, eh? $50. He just wanted that thing gone. <laughs> Done. So yeah. that one's a money maker. Man, that's a heavy pick. No pun intended. That was an interesting pick until we got to the load up. And that's when I got a workout.
that was a lot of heavy lifting. Now that's an Ontario guitar case, Sheldon. Are you gonna take this picture up front with you? Yeah, please. Those pants are great too. Those pants are perfect for picking. What do you want for them? I'll sell them for $15. Do you have anything in a 35? No, no, you gotta lose a couple pounds. And so far I'm going at a rate of about two pounds a pick. Well, that was a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a load. Hey, Somebody thanks. Yeah. Right. If we can ever figure out a way, we're coming back for this barn. Perfect. Well, you know where I live. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. He was funny. Thank you.